each one of you will making a presentation it is a addition to the speeches you have already made in jan in the beginning of january the presentations are partly based on your final paper the basic overview it is going to be a 4 minute presentation and you will prepare 16 powerpoint slides and that is the major difference from the previous speech that you did in the previous speech you did not have slides but for this speech you will have slides too let's look at the details this is the final assignment for wrcm102 and the speech in which you will present some element of your work that you think is worth sharing however this assignment is not a version of your persuasive research paper or your final research paper rather you will be presenting one of the interesting aspects of your project to the class so there are five requirements for this speech so when when we say that you will be presenting just one aspect of your project to the class but that we mean that you can probably present just one argument okay uh, from your paper so for example if you wrote five arguments in your paper each argument was for 200 words and you wrote 1000 words for your argument part you can take just one of those interesting arguments and uh, present that if you feel that presenting one argument it will be too short you might also think in terms of presenting your thesis statement first uh, elaborating it a little bit and then presenting one argument related to that okay so this way you will be presenting just one aspect of the paper so because your final paper is 2500 words piece uh, which includes your uh, you know history of the controversy and uh, the, the the status quo of the controversy as well therefore if you try to present the whole final paper you won't be able to manage that right so take one aspect of the paper to present you must speak for 4 minutes and uh, you you will have 15 second grace period you must have a powerpoint presentation that is 16 slides each set for 15 seconds so this is important for the powerpoint presentation in the case of the powerpoint presentation the duration of each slide should be 15 seconds that means you should speak for each slide for 15 seconds and the slide should be visible to the audience for 15 seconds each slide should be visible to the audience just for 15 seconds and after that you should proceed to the next slide so in fact the name that you see on the top picha guja presentation is a chinese expression so uh, this kind of presentation in is a presentation which uh is timed this kind of presentation is a timed presentation so that each slide has a specific time period and you have to adhere to that you have to stick to that now when you prepare the slide remember do not put too much text on any one slide predominantly you should use the images so so probably one sentence maximum one sentence on each slide say 8 to 10 words on each slide 
are just enough. And then put an image on it. However, the image that you put, it should not be a random image. It must be related to the point that you are making. Now the presentation that you make, it must be related to your topic. Okay, broadly speaking. So there are so many ways that when I told you one of the ways is to pick just one argument to present. That way, it will be a shorter version. And at the same time, it will be relevant to your topic. The topic must be interesting. Now, how will you determine whether it is interesting or not? Now, we are talking about the topic of the presentation. As you know, your papers already have topics. Okay? So, what is so special about the topic of the presentation to be interesting? Basically, you can play over you can modify your topic for the presentation. So if you are taking just one argument, you don't have to consider the topic of the bigger paper as topic of the presentation as well. You can rethink uh, a topic which sounds more interesting for the audience. Because it is a presentation, try to make your topic catchy and attractive. You should also practice good public speaking skills. This is something that we have uh, discussed with reference to the speeches that you did. While we were doing speeches, we uh, we discussed uh, these elements of good public speaking skill, like gesture, body language, eye contact, tone, vocal variation, etc. So you should have strong gestures, appropriate body language, constant eye contact with the audience, you, your tone should be appropriate to the content of the presentation. And you should try to bring vocal vari variations in your presentation. Uh, do you have any idea of what vocal variation is? Anybody? Anybody who doesn't know what vocal variation is? Oh, sir, ups and downs during the presentation. Yes, good. So it is up and down in your voice, right? So you can imagine a scenario where you listen to somebody who is reading from a book, okay? Reading aloud from a book and reading to reading to oneself, okay? Somebody is reading allowed a book to oneself and you are listening to that okay or you are able to listen to that in that kind of reading the reader just keeps reading without uh, making any variations in one's voice right that kind of reading where somebody is reading aloud without bringing any variation in the voice that kind of reading and that kind of voice is monotonous it becomes boring also it reduces the effectiveness of your speech so if you are making your speech without bringing any variety of voice 
your overall speech will sound uninteresting and it will be more difficult for the audience to follow what you are saying. So when we talk about vocal variation, that means if you are saying something which is more important, you put some emphasis on that part of the speech. If you are uh, so, and in order to show your emphasis, you raise your voice a little bit. Also, if there is something very significant that you say, you give a little pause after that. Or after you end every sentence, you make a very, very, very short pause after that sentence before you move on to the next sentence. So these are the five requirements for the presentation uh, that you, ha you have to keep in mind both while preparing it and while making the presentation. Any questions, please? Uh, sir, are we supposed to make like 16 slides for one argument? I'm talking about the second point. Uh, yes, right. That is true. Now, you know, you have to keep two limits in mind. One limit is the time limit, four minutes. The other limit is uh, the slides limit, which is 16 slides, right? So I... I just gave you uh, an example of one part of your paper. It could be one argument. But when you present one argument, you will not just isolate that argument and present that. Rather, of course, you will give some background to the topic as well. Okay, So you will begin with this statement and you will introduce your topic and then you will come to the uh, argument. Okay. So, yes, uh, I, uh, I said one argument, right? But if you feel that uh, you still have time after the thesis statement, introduction, and uh, some background information of your topic, you have given the argument, and you still feel that you can add four more slides, or you can speak for one more minute, then you can add another argument as well, right? But what is important is, do not try to cover a lot of material. Do not try to cover too much material in your presentation. Try to make your presentation as interesting and effective as it is possible for you. Right? So keep that criteria in mind. Okay? So basically, if, if, if we overload our presentation with too much information, Mostly, our presentations lose their effectiveness and they are not interesting anymore. Okay, so yes, I said one argument, but as I also explained, if you think that you can say more, you can add another argument. And of course, you should have a concluding slide as well. <clears throat> 